everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I have a panel here that I trimmed. So the panel was made up of these eight birds. I'll just show you a couple now, I'll show you the rest in a minute. Uh, but it was made of these eight birds, all super colorful. And so I cut these, um, I cut them out of the big yardage of fabric and I want to make placemats out of them and I think because they're so colorful I can kind of take scraps of fabric of all the different colors utilize them in the placemats the placemats will all be different but they'll all be cohesive with these eight birds so let me show you what I'm thinking the first thing I need to do is to give these a good iron and then I'm going to trim them all to be the same size and get rid of the black I have these all trimmed up and I will flip through them so that you can see all eight of the images. There is on many of these a little bit of black along the edge, but that will get caught uh, in the seam allowance, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, what I'm gonna ne do next is I'm going to go through these and pick eight fabrics that I think go with each piece. And I'm gonna try not to repeat fabrics, though I know for a fact that some of them, some of them will repeat, which is fine. Uh, but I'm gonna try and pick eight for each using primarily scraps, uh, but these are really cute. Now you'll notice that some of them, the colors uh, kind of go together. So for example, uh, this one and this one, And this one all go together, and then ones like this, and the penguin, and the partridge, and then, well, the partridge goes more actually with like this one, and the road runner. So many of these, you know, depending on the color, will have similar scraps. But let me find some fabrics. I'm gonna cut those fabrics, so these are all about eight inches. I'm gonna cut the fabrics into two inch strips. You can see here that I've picked out eight fabrics, two for each side. So what I'm gonna do is start to cut these into two inch strips. So I've cut one here and I've trimmed it to be just a little bit longer than my panel piece. I'm gonna sew right sides together, one fourth inch and open it up. Then I'll do the same for this next piece. Cut the two inch strip. I'm gonna trim this to be nice and straight and I'll add my two inch strip right along the side. I'll do that going all the way around. This is just a log cabin, so super simple. I've sewn on the bottom strip and trimmed a nice straight line. I haven't trimmed this yet, I'm not worrying about that yet, but I did cut my two inch strip to go on the side here. So then I'll sew this right sides together, open it up and then trim a straight line along the top. Once I attached my side, I then attached the top. Now I'll cut a straight line and attach this side on, right sides together, sew one fourth inch and iron open. At that point, I will have exactly a square and I'll do the whole thing again. I will attach my two inch strip to the bottom and then a two inch strip up to the top same one along there and then down the side and then I'll have an even bigger square. Now placemats are rectangles, typically not squares. And so I should at that point have enough wi uh, width, but I'll need to make it longer. So we'll talk about what to do at that point. I've added eight strips to each of my eight panel pieces here. So two on each side going around in the log cabin format, just like I showed you. Now, this is a square and we need it to be a rectangle. So I cut two strips and this time I cut them the same patterned fabric and I'm gonna put them on each side. These strips here are a little bit bigger than the inner strips. These strips are two and a half inches unfinished. I'm gonna go ahead and attach each of my strips onto the body of my placemat, right sides together, one fourth inch iron flat. I'll do that for all eight placemats. Then I'll have the tops done and we'll talk about what's next and I'll show you all eight of what I have at that point. Before I forget, I'm going to show you the selvage here in case you're interested in these. I got these a while back uh, actually as a gift, so I'm not sure uh, that you can still get them um, in your local quilt shops, but you may be able to look online. My placemat tops are done. This is the pheasant. 
I tried to use in the strips around it colors from the middle. So for example, this blue uh, kind of brings out the neck. I also used for the sides quite a few calf prints. Not all of my sides are calf prints, but this one and a few other ones are. So that's the pheasant. This is the penguin. The penguin was the most challenging for me in terms of picking out fabrics. Um, it's just very dark and there's, you know, a lot of blue and I didn't really have a lot of colors that kind of went with the, with the inside there. Um, but as you can see, I got, you know, some orange from the wing. There's some green here down at the bottom, which I used over there. Uh, this kind of blends a little bit more than I would like, but overall, I mean, I think all of these came out pretty good. And the Roadrunner is so fun. This is another cave print over here. And this one, even though, you know, there aren't a whole lot of different colors in the middle, I was really able to utilize a different color fabrics from, you know, reds to oranges to yellows to pinks. And even, um, you know, I wasn't sure about the green along the inside the outside since there's no green in the panel, but I think it's just like a little pop of color and works really well. Here's the goose. I don't need to talk too much about each one of these. You can kind of get the idea. Little thread over here. But again, really colorful. The turkey. I tried not to repaint, I tried not to repeat prints um, from placemat to placemat, but a few of them do have repeats. For example, uh, this turkey, uh, the bottom fabric is the same as the Roadrunner fabric here. If I did repeat any, I tried not to put it in the same place. So if the fabric was along the bottom, I tried to put it up along the side on a second one, that kind of thing. Here is the quail. I think quails are super fun. They just put a smile on my face. Now this fabric on the outside I thought was absolutely perfect, not only because of the coloring, but it really has this, um, you know, whatever this thing, this feather is on top of the quail's head, it really mimics it in this border here. So that is really fun. Very modern and geometric scraps used here. And these flowers that just kind of dot all the way up along this strip is really effective. The pelican, another calf print along the side. This one was the most colorful. I had the most colors to choose from. Greens, blues, pinks, purples, whites, yellows, blacks, uh, the, whole, the whole spectrum. So this one was an easy one to do and really fun. I think this one might actually be my favorite. Now I have one more to show you. Um, as you can see, I need to trim all of the borders here or edges, and then I need to make my quilt sandwich and add my binding. Now, you, there's a hundred million quilt tutorials on how to make placemats, how to sandwich them and do the binding. So I'm not gonna go into that today, but I did bind one and I will show that one to you next. That is the eighth placemat. All right, this is how the placemats look finished. As you can see, I chose this stripe to go along the outside. Was that as successful as I wanted it to be? I'm not sure. I'm not sure it pops quite as much as I wanted, but the challenge in finding a binding was since I use so many different colors in all these placemats, it's what do you, you know, what do you bind it with that's still exciting, that's not, you know, gray or brown. Um, so the black and white I thought was a good choice, but, um, but I'm not 100% happy with it. For the back, I did a red batik. I think for the backs, I'll just do a various various batiks in different colors just to kind of keep it consistent but different. I stitched along the, uh, what is this? Woodpecker. I stitched along the woodpecker to secure that woodpecker down and have it pop a little bit. And then I did stitch in the ditch around um, some of these lines here. This is a great way to use scraps. I'm always, I know everyone is always looking for ways to use scraps. And this is one of, I think, the perfect ways. You could even do it where not all of your strips are the same size. I find uh, many of my leftover scraps end up being strips for whatever reason. So this is a great way to utilize that, especially with all the different colors and prints, really fun. And then you can put anything, any panel piece in the middle. So you always see these panels in the stores of all different kinds of um, thematic things, houses and animals and fruits and whatnot. Um, and you could really stick any panel in here. And if your panel is bigger, you would make your strips smaller. And if your panel is smaller, you could add more strips or make your strips wider. So this was really fun. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I forgot to mention that if you like placemats, I have a whole playlist of placemats. So check that out and you'll get all kinds of different ideas. You can find that playlist on my YouTube channel. 
click view channel and then click playlist, scroll down and you'll find the one that says placemats.